Okay, in this video I'd like to introduce Newton's second law. This clearly leads on from my video in, in introducing Newton's first law. So a statement of the, the law is in front of you. It says, if a net external force acts on a body, then the body accelerates with a force F is equal to MA. Alright? Or if you want to write it mathematically, now this letter here is capital sigma, so that means just the sum. Uh, I have a video on that if you want to look at it. So uh, where the sum, the overall sum of the forces is non-zero or not equal to zero, then the sum of the forces where this is equal to ma, mass times acceleration. All right. So, in the same way as I looked at Newton's first law, you need to say, well, what does it say and what does it not say? Now, if you remember, Newton's first law said the following. It said that where this is the first law. It says where the sum of the forces equals zero, then A equals zero. All right? And in the second law, we're saying where the sum of the forces is non-zero, uh, non-zero, A is non-zero, and F is equal to MA. So basically, you could say that the first law is a specific um, is a specific case of the second law because look F is equal to M times A or the overall sum of the forces is equal to M A well what if the overall sum of the forces would equal to zero then A would be equal to zero which is the statement of the first law alright so we need to read into this as I said in the past it's not just a case it's not good enough I suppose really just to read it you need to actually understand what it means it means that in order for you to have any acceleration, if there is an acceleration, then there must be an overall net force acting upon it. And when I said about net force, just to finally say it again, if you have a force A and a force B and a force C, well then of course, in order to find out what the overall effect of all these forces in, is on something, you'd have to add them so you'd go something like A plus B plus C, and then you'd get the overall net result vector which would be something like this and you might say this vector is the sum of the forces alright and that's what we're talking about here the overall direction and magnitude of all the different forces added together alright and it's just going to be one single vector and a single number and a single direction so if you have an acceleration you have a force or a net force if you have a net force then you must have a net acceleration and where the acceleration is zero, you have no force, and where the the uh, the force uh, when the acceleration is zero, you have no force, and similarly, in as with the first law, where the net forces are equal to zero, then you must have no acceleration. All right, the units. So the unit here, F, is equal to mass times acceleration. So that's kilograms multiplied by meters multiplied by seconds to the minus two or kilograms meters per second squared and we call that a new unit we call it the Newton just by capital N and that is the unit of force the unit of force is the Newton alright and uh, just quickly the difference between mass and weight so if you look F is equal to M A well first of all uh, mass cannot be the same as uh, weight because uh, well, sorry, mass is not a force, first of all, because it's, you need an acceleration in order to have a force. But what if I had the following? If I had a man who is 10 kilos, well, a, a child of 10 kilos, and he is being accelerated by gravity, which is 9.81, or negative 9.81, the overall force would be negative 98.1 newtons. All right? And what that actually is, is his weight. So the difference between mass and weight is that weight is a force where mass is just the amount of matter in something. All right, And they're fundamentally different. So just to recap again, if you have an overall net force, then you must have an acceleration. Where you have no acceleration, you have no force. And uh, that's all I've got to say about that. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.